Life is weird. It makes no sense, but also perfect sense. The idea that life came about seems almost impossible, and yet here we are, huge beings of trillions of cells, when it began with something smaller than one here on Earth. And yet, if it can happen on Earth, and to this extent, why can't it happen on other planets around the universe? The existence of aliens has been one of humanity's favourite pet projects in the last century or so, with aliens seeming to come from all corners of our solar system. But in today's modern world, where in the universe is life most likely to exist? The first planet on this list was the first one to be confirmed to sit in what astronomers call the habitable zone, or Goldilocks zone, of a sun-like star. The Goldilocks zone is basically the area from the sun where life as we know it can develop, where water can exist in its liquid state. Its existence was announced to the public in December of 2011, after being discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope run by NASA. The positioning of the planet makes it a promising place to look in the search for extraterrestrial life. This is because although the planet lies 15% closer to its star, Kepler-22, than Earth is to the Sun, Kepler-22b's star emits around 25% less light than our Sun, meaning that the surface temperatures remain at around 22 degrees Celsius, well within the tolerable range for life to develop. However, as a member of the Cygnus constellation, this planet sits a colossal 600 light years away from Earth, making it incredibly difficult to study, let alone actually visit. There still remains many mysteries about this distant world, including what the planet's actually made of. Astronomers are still unsure whether the exoplanet is composed of mostly rock, gas or liquid, and only a very rough estimate of its mass can be made. We do know that Kepler-22b is around twice the size of Earth though, and that it has an orbit similar to Earth, with one year on Kepler-22b lasting 290 days. Although this planet is in a fairly promising location to find life, we do not simply know enough about it to be sure especially since it's so distant from us. Right, stop. I know, this one isn't a planet, it's a moon, but we wanted to give you an example of one closer to home, so don't rush to the comments just yet. Enceladus is the sixth largest moon of Saturn, the largest being Titan, the only moon known with an atmosphere, and the only body in space other than Earth with clear evidence of stable bodies of liquid on its surface. But Enceladus, on the other hand, doesn't have an atmosphere, and no liquid on its surface. Its surface is nearly entirely made of ice, but under this surface could be oceans of warm, salty water, rich in methane. This was first theorised when it was discovered that there were plumes of liquid containing water vapour spewing from Enceladus. The idea that Enceladus could hold life is crucial to how we perceive the existence of alien life across the universe. Look at it this way, life evolved on Earth independently, that much we are almost certain of. But if that can happen on two separate celestial bodies in the same solar system, then the likelihood of life around the galaxy and the universe skyrockets. The fact that Enceladus could contain methane is also crucial, because this substance is consumed by microbes in Earth's own deep dark oceans, an environment that is probably very similar to that of the underground seas in Enceladus. This planet, which has been referred to as Coruscant, or Earth 2.0, is another hopeful looking candidate for a host of alien life. It orbits a star very similar to our own, however its star, Kepler-452, is much older than our Sun, meaning that at the moment this alien planet is being exposed to a greater amount of energy from its star than Earth is getting from ours. This is because as stars become older, they grow and give out more energy over time. Kepler-452b is most likely composed of rock materials, like most planets of its size. However, this puts it at risk of losing any water that potentially exists on it, and causing a runaway greenhouse effect. But due to the planet's classification as a super-Earth, meaning that it has a mass greater than that of Earth's, it can probably avoid such a runaway greenhouse effect. Its larger size enables it to be more protected from the effect, and as a result it would be able to retain its oceans for longer than even Earth will be able to. Since this planet is so old, and has been in the habitable zone of its star for so long, it is quite possible that life has had time to originate and evolve here. Kepler-452b has therefore been targeted by SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, who have been using an array of telescopes to scan for any radio signals that might be coming from the planet. Although nothing has been detected so far, there are billions of radio channels to check, and it could still be possible that aliens exist there, but either haven't built technology that uses radio waves, or simply have not developed sentience that could allow them to make technology of any sort. However, as another member of the Cygnus constellation, Kepler-452b is extremely far away from Earth, sitting an immense 1,400 light years away. 
This distance would take the fastest spacecraft to ever leave Earth, the New Horizons spacecraft, around 26 million years to reach. Not exactly viable for humans to visit at this stage. Gliese 667cc is a lovely exoplanet orbiting within the habitable zone of a red dwarf called Gliese 667c and is around 23.62 light years away. Discovered in 2011, this planet has been used and mentioned in various works of fiction, The Audience by Sean McMullen, Not Alone by Craig O'Falconer and it was terraformed in the Alien vs Predator franchise. This isn't just coincidence of course, as the star orbits a trinary star system, with the stars Gliese 667a and Gliese 667b being larger than the class M red dwarf this planet orbits. Gliese 667 cc lies in the constellation of Scorpius, and the equilibrium temperature is 4.3 degrees C, a bit warmer than Earth's, which is minus 18.8 degrees C, being more towards the warmer end of the habitable zone. In addition to this, the planet is probably tidally locked, meaning that one side of the planet is permanently facing the sun, and one side is covered by eternal black darkness, a bit like our moon. Not to worry though, because there is a sliver of a zone around the planet where the right conditions for life as we know it to begin and evolve would be. Unfortunately, in 2015 it was revealed that the tidal heating of Gliese 667cc was more than expected, a full 300 times more than that of Earth's, meaning that it probably has less of a chance of sustaining alien life. The important thing though is the presence of liquid water, which this planet could still sustain. But life needs time, and that is exactly what this planet has, as its host star, Gliese 667c, will have a life 5 to 10 times longer than that of our sun, which is a heck of a chance for life to develop. And anyway, an important thing to note in this video is that life is almost certainly going to be nothing like the kind of life we know, so much so that it may not be called life at all. We discuss this kind of thing in our Mysteries of Life series, go check it out if you haven't already. This exoplanet, first revealed to exist in 2015, is a particularly exciting entry to the list. What makes this planet so special is that it is only 13.8 light years away from Earth. This is incredibly close in interstellar terms, compare this with 600 light years to the distance to Kepler 22b, or the 1400 light years to Kepler 452b, and you realise how near this potential harbour of life is. Originally I was going to speak about a different exoplanet, one that is even closer than Wolf 1061c. This was Proxima Centauri b, which only lies 4.2 light years away, and orbits in the habitable zone of its star. However, recent studies have revealed that, although it might seem like just the right place to host alien life, it is highly unlikely that Proxima Centauri b would be able to maintain an atmosphere critical for life to develop, due to the close orbit it takes around its red dwarf star. As such, it now seems more likely that Wolf 1061c is one of our closest neighbours to potentially accommodate extraterrestrial life. Of course there are other potential life bearing planets that are closer, for example Ross 128b, and more worlds could always be discovered in the future, but for now we'll focus on Wolf 1061c. The planet is a member of the Ophiuchus constellation, and also orbits a red dwarf. However, this star is unusually stable for a red dwarf and does not regularly emit dangerous x-rays or solar flares that would damage life. This is promising for the possibility of life, especially since Wolf 1061c orbits so closely to its star. One year on this exoplanet lasts only 18 days, and due to its very close proximity to its star, it is possible that Wolf 1061c is tidally locked. Like I said earlier, this means that only one side of the planet ever faces the star, causing one side to become very hot and the other to become very cold. This might seem bad for the likelihood of alien life, but again, it's entirely possible that life could be surviving along the line that separates the cold dark side and the hot light side. This is called the Terminator line and at the temperatures on this line, it could be possible for liquid water and also life to exist. So, Wolf 1061c is another good candidate for potentially being home to alien life, although once again, far more information is needed to confirm whether there is anything there or not. But at least this planet is much closer than the others, which makes studying it and the prospect of one day visiting there ourselves all the easier. To conclude, the possibility of discovering life on other planets remains incredibly low unless we visit there ourselves, something that is certainly impossible by today's standards. 
All of these planets have strengths and weaknesses when it comes to supporting life. It's very possible that life does not in any way meet the same standards that it does on Earth, and we may need to find a new separate word. Wouldn't that be exciting? What do you think? Which of these planets, and okay one of them was a moon, do you think is most likely to harbour aliens? Leave your suggestions in the comments below, we'd love to see what you think. Thank you very much for watching this week's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please like the video, it really does help us. And if you didn't, feel free to dislike, but if you do, please leave a helpful comment why, so we can improve for next time. If you want any more videos like this, then feel free to subscribe. As always, I hope you enjoy the week ahead, and I'll be seeing you on Wednesday to recap this week's science news.